Hello and welcome back. I'm glad we're going to actually take on a more complex formula now. We're going to play with a nested if statement. I have a line here that says flexible drivers. Basically, I want to take my capital investments and I want to increase them by the annual growth rate, which is over here. We just did this first spreadsheet analysis and we've inputted these annual growth rates. And we want to do this in all years except four and five, where you need to double the growth rate for capital purchases using a nested if equation. Now, I know that we can probably do this equation without actually using an if statement at all. We can be very efficient to doing that. So the cell aficionado should be like, oh, that's a piece of cake. We can just do this without using any if statement. And we certainly can use a VLOOKUP to do it, but that's not really the point of this exercise. The point of this exercise is to use a nested if statement because there are going to be times where you're going to need a nested if or an if inside of an if statement. It just works. And so it's a good thing to be able to do that. However, I do the point that I've looked at this, I have come up with seven different ways to run this calculation. I basically want to take the capital investments that we do each year, increase by the growth rate. But in some years, apparently in years four and five, I want to double that growth rate. And there's certainly many ways to do that. Uh, the, the inefficient or the wrong way to really do it is to go in and just say the previous cell, which is D37, which is this cell, the first one, times one plus the growth rate. That works, right? And you can simply just copy it over. But then, not really good for what happens when you get to year four and five. I guess in this case, you can just copy it over. Then you have to change it halfway through your formula and put another equation in there. Would somebody really do that? I guess people would, because they don't know how to do it. So then what happens is they they would extrapolate it and then you would have three different values in this equation. And when somebody picked up your spreadsheet, it'd just be a mess. Um, that would not be good. So we want to really not do that. I mean, base year one could be your baseline. Maybe you already have actuals for year one and you just want to figure out years two, three, four, and five. So this is goofy. You have a different equation every year. Okay, I don't really like that, but, but it gets there, right? The number is one, one million, $728,000 and it gets there and goes all the way up. Clearly not the correct way of doing it. The way I like to do a nested if statement a little more efficiently is when they're complex and the idea yeah, there could be many ways of building a complex formula. I like to break it into pieces because if you, for example, I took here and I took the base formula and the base formula is what you just saw me do up there, up there right? I basically said if it's year two, then multiply it by one plus the rate. Otherwise, give me a placeholder. Hmm, interesting. I put a placeholder in here. So if it's year two, and the condition is true, it is year two, condition is true, and then taking basically C37, which is the column beforehand, and times one plus D11, which is the growth rate, and we're done basically with that. Okay, I like that. Then, I work on the placeholder. The placeholder is a little more interesting in that I, I think about the number of conditions. I like to think of it if it's really mechanisms to run calculations. So the logical test here for the placeholder is, it's just another if statement. If it's year three, then what I'd like you to do is the same thing. But what if it's not year three? I'm cheating here, I'm cutting a corner and saying, okay, if it's not year three, then double it, say the growth rate times two. All right, you can just use your property multiplication just to run it in a sequence times two, and you get it right here. So you're able to take the, the D3, whatever, and put it in. Using the placeholder methodology, I'm able to take the first calculation, copy the calculation, don't drag it up and copy it, be very careful. Look how I'm using the formula bar to do this. I don't want relative references copying. That's a big point. I paste it up here and hit check. It will equal the same amount that I have here. Then I will come back down to my placeholder. I will copy everything but the if statement because you can't put double equal signs in. That messes it up. Say copy, hit the checkbox, come back in over placeholder. Remember, there are eight ways of doing this. So it's, I know a lot of you purists are probably thinking, he's thinking, why did he use the if or or something like that? Yes, I know, I'm well aware that there are other ways of doing it. I paste it in, I hit the check, and then we copy it to the right. 
and we get to the same million two. Okay, now I have one formula that goes through. So if this is our baseline, it has no formulas, this is everything has a good formula. Okay, well that was good. Still, you know, I kind of did, in fairness, this formula kind of did have a little bit of a nuance here with, um, it just assumed everything was in four or five, which is okay. I mean, I get it, it's just a nuance, but we're only doing double and maybe I shouldn't get too fancy with it. And that might be good enough for, um, for enough today with a good formula, it's the same formula all the way across. Well, that was nice. We pasted it and we got it to work. I want to do another way of doing it. I want to delete what I did. I know it pains me. And I, and I inserted a couple things over here. I call them standard years, standard years, and doubling years. I put these designations. I want to stay in the if way, the if method of doing it. Then I just created a simple if formula. This is ridiculously easy. And what I did is said, we hit the form function builder. If D10 right above it equals S for a standard year, then multiply one plus the um, the growth rate. If not, take that and double it. Okay, so the if not is a D for a double year, right? What I like about this method is I can designate year. So if I had an E year, I could make a double if formula, kind of like what we did over here and have the E designation, then I can actually designate different formulas by these designations. And that's actually pretty interesting because when I do this, this method, one formula, I copy it, I don't just copy it up, right? Hit the checkbox for the X. Then I come up here and I paste. Then I hit check, then I copy it across I get the same number. Still one formula going all the way across. It's actually a double if that was just a double if that leveraged this section over here. Now sometimes it won't print nice on the report so you can hide it simply by taking the colors and making it white on white and then nobody will see it. And then voila, now you have the if statement. You, you know you can just designate what the years are. They're either special years or double years. You're just extrapolating. I could have done the same thing with adding another V lookup in here to so look up what the values are, what the multiplication factors are per year. We could have done it if with a multiplication factor. If it's not an S year, then look it up on this table and we could do this. So there's multiple ways of doing this type of if statement. The key thing of doing a nested if statement is to simplify it. Yes, we can stick it and be very eloquent and put it inside and this is, I could adjust as easily here instead of adding the double condition. I could have said placeholder Two, put placeholder two here and added another if condition and did a triple if in this regard. So it would be not that difficult to do. As long as I have I have the constructs of my if, I can build them in pieces. And I, I really like to do that because the other benefit of building something in pieces is these aren't easy formulas. So when you're building formulas, you want to know where your problems are. Like where you up? When I was actually practicing for this, I had made a mistake. This first part was fine, but the second part I had accidentally instead of year two, I had chose D eleven, which is it was reading twenty is not the year two. It was doing something I didn't want to do. But by having it here, I was able to isolate the problem quickly, fix it, combine them, and do it. The problem is when you write it all in one equation right up front, then what happens is you take the chances you don't know which part of the equation broke. So I like to break my if statements into multiple statements. I find it to be um, more productive. It actually simplifies it, makes it a little quicker to do as well. Uh, I really love adding the hidden values, like a, a standard year and double year, because then I can make everything more variable. Variable. I could also add percentages in here and actually add the calcs for what kind of years they are, and it would just double it up too. So there's all kinds of things you can do there, and if you did that, you could just literally not bother to even doing the if statement. But for the purpose of this goal, we want to understand how to do double if because you don't always have the benefit of doing that. So you have to know it all ways of handling it. And like I said, there are at least five, maybe six other ways of handling this equation. So if you're be like, well, Chris, how about doing it this way? Absolutely works. Um, maybe this example is not even a good example for an if statement. Why do you use the if or or if and or all these other things? Of course, we could have done all those things. But barring that, I think this is a good demonstration of how to build a complex nested formula.